Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another Pimp My Ride type of video for you here today. Uh, and yes, uh, it's not technically a repair video, but it will walk you through the process of adding aftermarket accessories to your vehicle. In particular, I am in my 2001 Honda Odyssey, uh, and it being a minivan, wouldn't it be nice to have a DVD player to keep the kids occupied on long trips, that type of thing. My friends at Car ID have provided me with this 12.1-inch uh, widescreen TFT monitor uh, DVD player from Boss Audio Systems. Uh, and this is what we will be installing in the Odyssey today. Now, I will say this. I've gone through the box and looked at the installation instructions and found them to be woefully inadequate. And in essence, what I'm saying here is there's a whole lot that I'm going to be learning during the process of making this video. And if you go to install one of these systems, I'm sure you'll be happy to have this information. But I'm sure we'll figure it out uh, along the way. Here is the actual DVD player itself. As I said, it has different covers around the outside so you can change its color to match interior color. Here's three, some of the most popular ones. Also, headphones, two sets of headphones uh, so that you can watch a DVD while the other passengers may be listening to the radio. In addition to being able to play uh, DVDs, this one also has a USB hookup, an SD card hookup, and it has AV inputs as well, and a remote. All right, just to give you an idea of what I had mentioned earlier about the uh, installation instructions. This is pretty much it as far as the wiring is concerned. You have all these other RCA type hookups that if you have that type of system, you can run this that, that way uh, as far as getting your audio into the speakers of the vehicle. But there's also an FM transmitter so you can just dial in a, a radio station and listen to it that way. That's the option I'm going to pursue today because I have the stock head unit in there now. I do need to supply it with a power and a ground. Also, it has a dome light assembly. So there is uh, provisions to trigger the dome light either through a ground or a positive connection and also has its own power. So you'll be gaining an additional dome light in addition to a DVD player. And as far as the rest of the installation goes, the mechanical side of how to get this up in the vehicle, that's it. <laughs> Here's the plate. Here it is. Here's some screws. Put it together. Here's the headphones, the remotes, uh, an external input for with RCA connections. Here's the different covers. Here is, I'm not sure what this is. This may be a cover for the entire unit uh, to mount up into the ceiling. I'm not sure on that one. This is the screen cover that it would flip down oh, that's there. And here's the outer cover. So this can roughly give us an idea of how big this is. And there we have it. That's how big the unit will be. And here is the actual unit and all the wires that we need to hook up. Huh. I'm glad I get to change the cover because this one's kind of uh, warping off of here a little bit. It says it's pretty big. It actually weighs a little more than I thought. Originally what I was thinking was is that I would take this mounting plate and just put it behind the headliner and then screw this up into that and have the headliner hold it up. After feeling how heavy this is and how large it is, I don't think that's gonna be an option. I think we're gonna to have to find some way to fasten this to the roof of the vehicle. One of the first things I wanna do is just sort of get a general idea where I wanna place this. As I said, this is a little heavier than I thought. I originally thought that I could just attach it or, or sandwich this, this plate between the headliner and this unit and I'd be fine with that. But given that it's just cardboard, the, the headliner's really not structurally sound enough, enough to do that. But I will need to have a general idea where I'm gonna place it. And I think right about here is pretty good. I know I've got some room up above this headliner because there are ducts that go to the vents up above it. But uh, I think one of the first things I'm gonna need to do is just sort of mark a general location which I'm thinking is gonna be right about here for that. There's a gap here as well that's created by that because this headliner is curved right here because it comes down for these vents. I think we ought to get started by taking down the headliner and finding out what we've got up underneath here. That should do it. Now that the headliner is detached, I'm gonna bring it down and try to, I may not take it all the way out, but I wanna move it back far enough so I can gain access to the area that I'm hoping to gain access to, which is where the DVD player is going to go.
going to put this on top of the van so that it stays safe and hopefully doesn't get too dirty. Now that the headliner's out, I'm going to try to sort of mock up where I'm going to locate the uh, DVD player. And I'm having some issues because there's this hump here in the uh, ceiling that hangs down. If I put it back here, it seems a little close to the driver. When I was mocking it up before, it felt quite a bit better up here. So what I may end up doing is coming up with some sort of spacer for the back side here and then finding some way to attach it to some of these existing fasteners uh, up in here. So I'm going to remove this mounting plate from the uh, DVD player and see what I can do as far as positioning that uh, in a good location. All right, this is the mounting plate here that I'm going to have to remove. This is the business, so to speak. It's like it sits like this. Since this will be facing back, I'm just going to mark this to where, with an arrow, well, here I can just do it like this. That faces back, or better yet, this is the side that I'll actually be working with. So I know that this faces the back. So I'm going to figure out how to mount this securely. Once I've got that sorted, I'll mock the headliner back up in there, find out where these uh, screw holes come through so that uh, all I have to do is mount this up and I will minimize the holes that I'm going to cut because I'm also going to have to have some sort of access hole into the headliner for all this wiring as well. Now I have some existing holes here that I plan to utilize. I can utilize one of them for this mounting plate. Uh, and since it's fungible, I can move it back and forth. The issue comes in on this other side here, which I've measured and I've got about a three quarter of an inch gap to go between here and the back side of this. So I'm gonna see if I can find something of that size that I can put in there. And I just need to find something to fit in one of these slots. So as long as this is attached to the metal, I've, I feel that it, it, will, it will work. Even if it's just these two fasteners, I'm still going through the headliner, so that will provide some support, but it'll be hard mount mounted to the ceiling so that that way when you open and close the screen, it won't stress out the headliner too much. I've begun to mock up the plate. And there is one existing uh, screw hole there that I'm gonna utilize for uh, the front mount. But more importantly than that, I found these dowels that actually are for a cylinder head that just so happen to be three quarters of an inch in thickness. And I'll be able to put two of them up in here like this as sort of sleeves on either side. And I need to mark where I'm gonna drill my holes in that hump there. So I'm using my awl, my punch, which is what I often use for drilling anyway. And I'm not so concerned because this is slotted about getting them exact. I just want to get them roughly in the location so that I can uh, drill holes for my fasteners. Now I just guessed, I got a couple self-tapping screws over on my magic screw pile, but I just guessed it's the size drill bit. So I'm just going to quickly drill a hole just to see, and these are self-tapping screws by the way. Just gonna quickly drill a hole up here just to see if I got the right size drill bit. Perfect for that one. So I'm gonna drill the holes and then uh, try to mock this into place. Okay, I probably should have been wearing safety glasses there. I'm gonna go grab my measuring tape also so I can get this centered up. Okay, Let's see what we got. I'm gonna go to the pinch welds. On this side I got uh, oh, about just a shade under 15 and three quarters. This side's at 14. So I need to go this way quite a bit. Uh, it's 14 and three quarters on that side. And I'm about, you know, needs to go over this way just a little bit. I say measure twice, cut once, right? 
Okay, I'm off by maybe 16th of an inch, but for the most part, I think I'm in there. I probably should measure the back also because it could be off to one side or the other. That side's the same thing. So I've got it, I've got it where I want it. And I realize I've got it upside down just for the heck of it. I'm gonna mount the player up into place just to see what it's like to open and close it. See if that's gonna be an issue. Uh, Cause I may have to add, probably will add another screw over here. In fact, I, th I think I'll do that now just so that I have it. I feel fairly confident with that. I think it'll be less wobbly when the headliner's in because it'll be brought up against that headliner. But I feel that part of that's a little bit unavoidable. The main thing is, can I open and close it? And I feel I can. I'm gonna sit in the driver's seat, see what it's like. Seems pretty good here. I mean, sitting in the driver's seat, it doesn't seem to interfere. Obviously it's gonna interfere with my rear view, uh, but hopefully the side mirrors will help make up for that. Outside of that, I, I'm kind of liking that placement. Seems to work good for me. Been doing a little planning off camera and there's a couple of, couple of other hurdles we need to cross before uh, we can call this done. Now that we've got this part mounted securely to the roof of the van, great. But we still have to find out where that location is in relationship to the headliner, number one, so that when I run the screws through to fasten this thing to the ceiling again, I can do it with the headliner in place. In addition, we need to also run our wiring to the fuse box and to the dome lights, because as I said, this has a dome light inside of it, so it'll be, uh, it'll be nice to have that, that functional and with the other dome lights, so everything comes on all at once. The dome lights have their own separate power feed, which is great. Uh, but you can either run the ground or the power trigger, uh, which I'm going to run to one of these other dome lights that are right next to it. I'm not going to be using these audio in and outs right now, uh, but I'm also going to have to drill another larger hole in the headliner up behind this player so that I can run all the wiring up above the headliner. Okay, well I've looked around to both, fu both interior fuse boxes inside the 2001 Odyssey and I can't find any open slots that are ignition hot. Any open slots that I did find don't have any power or ground or any provision to add anything, so I can't tap into the fuse box directly. I was a little disappointed to find that. However, I did find a solution at the auto parts store and this is a, an add a circuit wire. And what it does is it plugs in in place of an existing fuse and allows you to fuse a power out coming out. So I found uh, a circuit inside the fuse box that I believed, I'm not gonna say is non-essential, but if I end up losing that circuit, I'm not gonna worry about it too much, and that's the rear wiper. It's a fuse circuit, it's on its own, and it's ignition hot. So in other words, when I turn on the key, I have power to it. When I turn off the key, the power goes away, which I don't wanna leave a uh, power source going to the DVD player all the time in case it gets left, down, left on. I don't want it to run the battery down. So I believe this to be a good solution. There's two fuse slots in this uh, component here. One is for the existing circuit and the other is for this wire coming out. So I'm fusing this wire coming out. Now I couldn't really find a specification for the amount of amps this DVD player draws. I was a little disappointed by that. That being said, uh, what I think I will do is I'll put a 10 amp fuse in here uh, going to the DVD player as well as the 10 amp fuse that was existing for the uh, rear wiper. Then I'm going to check them both to see if they well I'm going to check the rear wiper to see if it still works. If it does, well Bob's our uncle. We'll just keep moving. Now going through the fuses here, as I said, the empty slots in this Odyssey are th just that, they're empty. But here's the 10 amp fuse for the rear wiper, which I'm going to remove. And then I'm going to install the fuse into that circuit adder. So now I have two fuses here. I'm going to leave them both pointed down. Just plug it in in place where the other fuse went. Now I'm going to check to see if I have power with the ignition switch on. Right now it's grounded. 
I've got power with it on. Now I'm going to try to see if my uh, rear wiper still works. Which it does. Now all I need to do is run a wire down to this for the power for the uh, DVD player and we should be good to go. I have uh, some extra wire here that I'm going to run down to the fuse box to my connection that I just made so I can run power to the uh, DVD player. And I'm going to do it by running it right behind this pillar. Okay, I'm going to try to leave myself a bit of extra wire so that I can drop the unit down to service it. I may have a little bit too much in the end because I'd love, I'd love the ability to drop that down almost far enough to set it on this passenger seat if I, if I needed to. And it's all going to be hidden up behind the headliner anyway. For now, what I might just do is just sort of mock this up so I can test it, see if it works, and then we'll come back and finish it off. The ground wire actually could be fairly easy in that I could just use one of my mounting screws as a connection for that. I have a ground wire that I'm going to run. I was going to run it to the mounting brackets. I've decided against that. It's actually going to be easier. I have a hole right here in the uh, roof. It's already tapped out and everything. Oh, you know what? I can't use that because that is for the uh, HVAC mount is what that goes to. So I'm gonna have to find me something else. Now I've drilled a hole. I'm gonna add a ground. Grounds can be found just about anywhere on the body. Now granted, the best grounds are the ones that go to the frame and the battery itself. But you don't always have that option. Got ourselves good ground. Now, like I said, I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of extra wire. It's only temporary. I'm only testing it out before I actually commit. Now I'm gonna hook up the power and uh, well, try it out and see if it actually works. That should do it. And there it is, power's up. Now that we know the uh, system can turn on, let's see if we can uh, get the dome light wired up so that that can work. Now we're to a place where I am trying to figure out how to hook the dome light feature of this uh, up to the, the DVD player. And what I've done is I've got my finger on the door switch right now, and I've got all the other doors closed. So it turns on when you uh, open the door switch. There's three wires coming into any one of the dome lights and this one in particular because it's close by and I'm going to tie into it. Now it stipulates that they want battery positive going to one and then they want the trigger going to one. It just seems easiest to go straight to this dome light if I'm honest rather than try to run a separate circuit to a fuse box that's hot all the time and then do the trigger. I could do it separately like that but I, I just don't think I need to. I think I can just basically tie in to this uh, dome light circuit on this one and everything will work like it should. Now the center uh, connector here, this white wire, is hot all the time. The one next to it, the black, uh, the black wire, is that one striped? Yeah, black wire with a blue stripe. That one is hot right now. And then the green wire with the white stripe all the way on this outer, outer end is ground all the time. However, when I tie into the black wire with the blue stripe and I let go of the door switch it goes to ground and my dome light comes on so that's my trigger so my trigger is ground it's a ground trigger and it happens when I hit the door switch so now I'll close the door switch again give it a couple of seconds and that should switch to power The uh, other ground that's there, I think is there all the time for when you hit this switch on and off. And that one's not triggered when you do this, at least, at least not here. I think it just uses the power in the ground that's there, completes the circuit when you close the switch. 
but I'm just going to make it work with the doors is all I'm concerned about. This is a courtesy light for when someone's sitting in the seat. I don't need the center lights coming on at the same time. It just doesn't seem necessary. So I'm going to tie into this uh, blue or black, this black and blue wire for my trigger and this center white wire I'm going to tie in as my battery positive. Okay, so before I put the headliner in and before I actually hook up to the uh, dome light circuit, I'm going to mark my wires as to where they go because I really won't be able to join everything together until I've got the headliner in. I'm going to pull the wires down through the headliner, connect everything, and then I'm going to put the DVD player up in place. Uh, so right now what I'll do is since, especially since I only have two color wires is yellow and brown, is I'm going to mark everything as to what it is before I uh, commit to anything. So this, this here is going to the fuse box. I'm just going to mark it as such. I'll do the same to my ground, which Honestly, I think I should make that ground wire a bit longer, which I might end up doing. Even little breadcrumbs like this will save your bacon. I know I'm tying into these wires in here. I turned the dome light circuit off, by the way, so this is, this is not hot at all right now. There's nothing happening here. Oh, I lied. I turned it off. I guess the ground side, when you turn, I turned off the master switch but beware, because that's still hot. I was hoping turning off the master switch would cut power to everything, but apparently it doesn't. All I'm doing is checking to see if it works right now. Black wire here is the negative trigger. Because I'm only using the negative, I don't believe I have to use the positive. I'm also going to get that dome light, see if that can still work as well. Well, works when you turn it on. All right, there's the door. Right now, I've closed all the doors and everything. I have my finger on the door switch. I'm uh, just gonna let go of the trigger here. And as you can see, both lights come on. Now I'm gonna push the door button again. It takes a few seconds for it to shut off. And it goes off. And this one goes on and off separately. In concept, this will work. So now we just gotta wire it up. Away we go. Now I'm gonna make my wires long enough to reach and uh, basically get it all set to put the headliner back in so I can just mount this thing up. Since yellow's already my power wire color, that's the wire I'm gonna use for the power side. Just to make absolutely sure I have the best connection I can have, I'm gonna solder that. And now I have my dome light circuit ready to go. Just gonna label them up. Then uh, we can remove the uh, DVD player, reinstall the headliner, figure out how we're gonna mount things through the headliner, and then we're done. My tape got all weird. Now everything needs to get disconnected so that I can reinstall the headliner, figure out how I'm going to uh, do the pass-through for the wiring for it, and also for the mounting. Uh, we got to get those two things sorted. Once we've got that sorted, it's uh, a matter of changing the plastic cover on the outside of this. I'm going to go from this black to a gray. They gave me the option to do that. And then, uh, well, it's time to enjoy some DVDs. Fire up some popcorn. <laughs> All right, let's figure this out. I'm going to take this over to the bench, but I actually put this on upside down, so I'm going to flip it around. Now we're to the point where I need to reinstall the headliner, mark the area where the mounting screws are going to go through the headliner, and also where I'm going to run all the wiring through it. All right, so that's roughly the area where it's going to be, and I believe my mounting plate is right 
in this area here, right where my hand is. So now, I need to figure out how to mark that area. For that, I'll use my Sharpie. And for the wiring. Now I'll take this back out and uh, see where my marks are. Now I've got sort of a general location on the headliner already from what I just did. But I can remove this uh, cover and use it as a template since these are the four mounting points and also this could be for the harness over here. So I've got a pretty good idea of where I can make my holes uh, so that they won't be seen. Now here it is at the headliner. As you can see, I got, I got this side over here pretty close, but that side over there could be a little bit better. So I'll just mark these holes. And also this area over here because that's where all the wires and everything come down. So I know that if I make a hole in this area, it'll still be covered. Because the last thing I want is to go through all this only to discover that I have holes that are visible in the headliner. But this, I would say, is probably the scariest part for me. I have a universal stepped drill bit that I'm gonna to use to cut these holes. This is just the easiest thing to do this with. I think what I might do is I might just do these, like these front two, to make sure that those are, and go up in there and fit it, make sure those are correct. If those are correct, then I know my other ones would be correct. I know, I know it can work at that point. Uh, I've also got a little bit of room because it's a fairly large DVD player, so it leaves a little bit of space or a few gaps but not that many gaps. So I'm either gonna mess this up royally and need to buy myself a very expensive headliner or I'll be successful and I could be your hero for life, whatever. Here goes. It's amazing how quickly that happened. <laughs> All right, let's see how those line up. We need to get all our screwdriver or something to check them. I'm gonna come through with the drill from this side just to uh, clear out the hole a little bit more, but I, I think it's good. I'll be honest, I can't see a darn thing. I've got it close. Pretty darn close. Close enough, I think. If I need to, I can make the holes bigger, but where we're at right now, I think that's gonna do it. If we're gonna commit, we might as well commit. Here we go. Yeah, I knew that was gonna end badly. So what I'll do is I'll just get my template and uh, try this again. I'm gonna have to go under this foam or just cut part of it off. I think that's probably the most practical thing is I'll just cut it off because when I go to uh, tighten this thing up, I'll have all this padding I'll be working against. So I think it'd be better if it just wasn't there. It's really just there for sound deadening. I can tell it's pretty darn close.
That hole is gonna have to be bigger. Well, that's all those wires. Let's see if we can get that uh, DVD player mounted to the ceiling. If we can do that, we can rest the stuff, we're good. I finally got everything lined up inside the van, but I'm not gonna use this black shroud. I'm gonna be using this gray cover instead. I needed to remove this for my template, uh, which was just held on by a bunch of very small screws around the circumference. I'm sure you can figure out, but also this outer shroud is held on by several recessed screws down inside of here. So make sure you remove those screws. Black shroud removed. But I also wish to get rid of this cover as well. Pops off from what I understand. There's this cover in the back. Looks like it just pops on and off. Looks like it comes in, hooks underneath. Seems to be a little easier with it open. Here's my cover. And actually this logo's already kind of peeling off. So not too happy with the logos. Now, the other cover. Because of those uh, screw holes, you gotta kinda get it on there just right. I'm half entertaining the idea, since I'm not using these RCA connections right now, I'm just leaving them underneath this cover. My fear is, however, that I might be creating a rattle. That's my concern. But outside of that, that just leaves me these wires to deal with up inside the vehicle. You know what? I think I'm gonna do exactly that. I'll just leave those in there. They're not hurting anything. They're not in the way. These are very small screws. Let's get this thing mounted in the vehicle. Okay, kids, now it's time to wire the junk up, except for the FM antenna, I don't need to wire that up. This is my thought. I, I'm not going for the soldered connections this time, and you may be disappointed by that, and I apologize. But sometimes you have to go for efficiency, which is what I'm doing, and I'm gonna use crimp connectors. I'm gonna use a good set of crimping pliers to do this with. Okay, this goes to the fuse box, positive. And I'm gonna leave, kind of leave my labels on, just, uh, just in case. and I have what I believe to be a good connection, and I'm done. Here's my ground. I'm doing one crimp, and then another crimp 90 degrees opposite. Checking the connection. Okay, the blue wire here was not gonna be used. 
I'm just gonna use these other two. And that pretty much does it. Now we've got to somehow fasten this up there. Now they gave me these short screws to start with are woefully inadequate. So these short screws, they aren't going to be enough. They were enough to mount it a minute ago, but not through the headliner. So I need something longer. They provided some extremely long screws in the uh, kit, but I have found some screws that are right about in the middle. And my fear with the uh, longer screws was is they would go up into the roof line and I didn't want to do that. So I found these are half the length of what they gave me. I could have also cut down the ones they gave me, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with this. I have one of the longer screws that I can use. Hopefully like a guide to try and set up the other screws. Yeah, it's really wicked long, but if nothing else, I know I'll be able to find where it's supposed to go. This is gonna be difficult for the first couple of screws. I have one started, which may be all I need of those secondary screws, those extra long ones. Because if I can get two of me's in diagonally, I think that's all I'll need to do. We are on our way. I still have some stuff with the headliner to go, but all intents and purposes, it's uh, pretty much there. And yeah, this is a little wobbly, but that's, that's got nothing to do with me and my mounting or anything like that. Now that it's in there, I think before we go too much farther, probably not a bad idea to test it out again, make sure the dome light stuff works, make sure that uh, the actual DVD player works. And once it does, it's really just a matter of putting this mess back together. All right. There it is. Now you might be asking, hey Eric, throw a disc in, let us watch a movie. No, no, YouTube bots would be all over this video if I did that, so I'm not gonna put in any DVDs. I will off camera though, and I'll let you know that it worked, but so far, so good. Oh, and the dome lights, they work also. You can either turn them on with the doors, turn them on like that, or like I say, turn them on with the doors. Wait, I gotta turn the door thing off. Okay, so all that stuff works. That was somewhat stressful, but successful. Uh, one of the things I found out when I actually tested a DVD, and once again, I apologize for not doing that because like I said, YouTube bots and copyright infringement, nah, we're not gonna play that game here. So sorry, I couldn't show you that on camera. However, it does work, I can assure you of that. One of the things I did discover that I did, was not aware of is there are speakers inside this unit itself. So it actually has a sound output. Outside of that, you can hook it up into your head unit if you have those RCA connections, you can run cables up there. Also, you have the FM transmitter that you can dial in the radio station for this and listen to it uh, with the vehicle that way. In addition, there is the wireless headphones that were provided with it. So there are lots of ways to get audio out of this. Uh, aside from that, the most challenging parts of the installation for me 
were uh, basically getting everything lined up to mount this to the roof of the vehicle. That was the most difficult thing, especially trying to figure out where to go with the uh, headliner, all that type of thing. But taking that plastic piece off the back, that plastic cover, really helped. That laid out a template for me that I was able to use. And so far, it looks like a nice, clean installation. Now, I had some dirty gloves while I was installing the headliner. Don't yell at me for that. This headliner's already stained and everything. But if you have a nice headliner, kid gloves might not be a bad idea. That way, and also keep it away from dirt, debris, that type of thing as you work, because that can also affect the finish of your installation. Outside of that, that fuse uh, installer, what is that? Uh, uh, add a circuit, I think is what it was called. I put a link in the description to that as well. That really saved my bacon as far as adding power to the unit. Um, and I chose something that was, I'm not gonna say non-essential, but not critical to the operation of the vehicle, which was the rear wiper. So look around, find a circuit that's out of the way, so to speak, if you have to tie in in a similar manner than the way I did in this video. Links in the description to everything, including a link to Car ID. I wanna thank them for providing me with this unit to use in this video to share with you today. And if you have automotive questions that were not addressed in this video, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguide.com. There's a welcome video there to tell you about all of our amazing features to help you with automotive issues, should you have them. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram, and I close, uh, I post repair videos on Friday, so stop back and see me then. I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.